Let's start the process of oogenesis. The whole point of the anatomy is to make some eggs so that we can combine with some 500 million sperm and hopefully make a parasite that will live in your uterus and make you really happy, right? So oogenesis is really similar to spermatogenesis. In fact, it's almost identical with a couple of little tweaks that uh, I find amazingly fascinating. So we start out with a diploid cell. What do you think that diploid cell is called? O, O, gonium. Indeed. Oh, the handwriting's terrible. It's worse than normal. The O gonium actually begins the process of my, uh, it, it goes through just like spermatogonium, go through a single stage of mitosis to produce primary oocytes. Ugh, so irritating. <laughs> that says sites. So we produce our primary oocytes. And we started with an oogonium, and all that is is the process of mitosis. So really, you're going to end up with two from a single oogonium. And here's the deal. This is in, uh, uh, in utero. That says in your utero, which means when you, ladies, were in your mama's bellies, you had these primary oocytes, 500,000 of them. Not 500 million of them, 500,000 of them in each ovary, a million total, one million primary oocytes in your mother's belly. They were already there in your ovaries, in your mama's belly when you weren't even born yet. You had all your oocytes. If you think about it, if you have children, then half of your kids were actually in your mother's belly. That's crazy. <laughs> I love that. Whereas the fellas, like, it's disposable sperm. Like, that sperm probably didn't even exist until that morning before copulation took place to produce the baby that came from that sperm. I mean, it's just like we prioritize our um, small humans differently. Uh, from an anatomical perspective, which is really fascinating. Guess what? We are now going to start the process of meiosis. We're going to just start it in utero, and then we freeze. We do not finish the process of meiosis. We do not finish the process of meiosis in our 500 oocytes in each ovary until puberty. And then we will mature probably six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten, so that one is ready to go every month. One. And the, the ten that kind of started the process of maturing, you know, they, they might start to go through um, some more meiosis, but Nobody, nobody, nobody does anything else. Everybody's frozen. We've started the process of meiosis, and then we freeze until puberty. <laughs> I hate not having functioning technology. Once we hit puberty, then, like I said, we're going to have every month, I mean, Several of them start to mature, but we're going to actually have some of them um, finish meiosis one. That's a one. And once they finish meiosis one, this is another little interesting thing. They finish the process of meiosis one, and they make one little tiny, like, disposable piece of crap thing that's not even going to become an egg. And the other one is really big. And so they basically, instead of making two 
uh, cells after the process of meiosis? One. They just make one. And again, these are haploid cells. The process is exactly the same. It's just that our timing is really bizarre. So one of them will finish going through meiosis one every month. Five of them will go through the process of meiosis one and finish it. These guys are what are they called? Secondary oocytes. Yes, it is true. I'm sure there's a, a page in your book that will help you visualize this. Are you ready for this fantasticness? The secondary oocyte, basically the secondary oocytes are going to go through a, it's basically a race, a race to the finish. You're going to have six a month, let's just say five per month, that are now secondary oocytes, and guess what happens? Wouldn't you expect that they are going to become an ovum? One of them is going to become an egg. You're going to expect that it's going to finish meiosis too, right? Of course, because, you know, of course you expect that. Oops, that's meiosis too. You thought that that's how it would be. Guess what? You only finish meiosis two and actually become an ovum. This is so weird if you get fertilized. So I can count on one hand how many times my eggs finished meiosis because I, I know how many pregnancies I've had, and that's it. All my other eggs, even the ones that once a month get ovulated, if it doesn't get fertilized, it doesn't finish meiosis. That is incredible. That is so cool. So let's see here. Make sure that you are clear that uh, we only finish meiosis if fertilization takes place. Fertilization, what has to happen for the egg to get fertilized? Well, the sperm has to come up one out of 500 million has to make it up the fallopian tubes with all their packed lunches and all their slippery mucus and the lovely pH and the medicine that they get. I mean, really, the fellas have a nice little situation. The egg who's going to live for 24 hours is out there. If one lucky sperm manages to get in, then meiosis II will finish. We will end up with a haploid cell. We're going to have another little garbage cell over here on the side. Just kick that thing out of there, and voila, you might have a baby. Let's talk about ovulation because we now, you know the process to make the egg. Let's look at what, um, what's happening in the ovary itself in order to pop the egg out into the fallopian tubes.